Hey guys, today we are working on a 1952 Case DC-3. Now I bought this tractor intending to get it running and realizing that it's not, not worth my time. However, we're going to get the engine running. The transmission has something very wrong in it. I think it has a broken roller chain because we tried pull starting it. Wouldn't turn the motor over at all. Would not turn the motor over. It was spinning tires, one left, one right. Not working to spin the motor over. Then one of the tires locked up and we thought, well, maybe there's a stone in the brakes or something, something bad in the brakes. Brakes are bound up. It's been sitting a while. Okay, tried pulling it backwards. Wheel turned for about 14 inches of travel. I don't know, that's oddly specific. It rolled a little bit and then it stopped and locked up going the other way. It's like, nah, we're not gonna play this game. There's a few parts I bought this tractor to get for sure. That alternator, good alternator, it's 12 volt swapped already. This had good tires. Well, decent tires. It had a belt pulley. And it was already 12 volt swapped and distributor swapped. And it has a new radiator in it with just a minor dent right there in it, but I don't think it'll leak. Thing is though, the block was frozen and cracked at some point and been repaired. Yes, I could run this. I'm not really that afraid of it, but I need a lot of these other parts for my DC4. I'd like to put the belt pulley on it. I think mine already has an alternator on it, but I really need the 12 volt distributor set up. And this one's already been done, so I don't have to do it. Um, so we're gonna try to get this motor running, make sure it's not like completely trashed. Then I can tear it apart later this summer and put the parts in the barn that are good and junk the transmission that's probably crashed or has had something very bad happen and pull the parts out that I need. Also, that nose cone's been uh, cut and welded when they did the radiator, I imagine. So let's see if we can get this thing to do anything at all. Well, we got battery cables rigged up on it. We wanted to make sure the motor wasn't stuck when I put it here, but it could have got stuck. I wanted to make sure the starter was sort of okay. So. Sounds pretty even, a little bit of gallop, but not too bad. We're gonna pull the plugs out, put some oil in the bores, get our uh, coil power and uh, go from there. One spark plug out, it's pretty rusty, but I got it cleaned up. There were uh, seeds coming out of the rocker cover. Ooh, oh, they're just in the snout. I think there's a screen in there, so it could only fill it so much. Yeah, there's a screen in here. That's a little concerning. It doesn't look that bad in there. There's oil, there's a little bit of rust. I'm not, not that scared of it though. I've had way worse stuff running. Valves don't seem crazy. And that one's out a little bit. But again, they'll run like that. Oh, that's not good. That's a bent push rod is what that is. I almost guarantee it. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> nope, that screw just must have backed. No. Uh-oh. What does that mean? There might be a stuck lifter. I don't see anything bad down there. Hmm. Why is that so loose then? Oh, that valve stuck down. That's why. We'll put this guy back down in his, his milkshake hole. Make sure we get it back on the bottom piece. I'm not sure that I got it. Sounds okay, but I don't know that it's okay. What is this? I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. So that valve stuck. So she might run, but she's not going to be real happy. Centipede looking thing. Hmm. She's just going to be a runner with work is what we got here. If we give that a good smack, it might be okay. Give her a snort.
Something is very wrong in there. You heard when it tried to pop that clack. I almost wonder if there's a wrist pin loop. So, as we were cranking, we heard some funny noises. Figured we'd better take a look in here. There's a little bit of water there, actually. What that looks like. Um, oil pan's really spotless, though. Like, I'm impressed with how clean that is. So, cylinder one. A little bit of play. Not too bad. These were Babbitt bearings. That's front to back. Side to side's almost nothing. You go to uh, three. That's bad. And lots of front to back, so it's been doing that for a while. Ah, uh, there's still a shim left in this one. Uh, it's not enough shim, but it's some. Um, if it hasn't somehow wrecked the journal, I could always just knock them down a little more on that surface and bore them. I don't have the right machinery to do it, but I could find a way. I have a lathe. And four. Actually, four's not all that bad. You were getting a lot of side to side play on it, or front to back, not side to side. So uh, three's definitely messed up, but we're gonna try to start it anyhow, because it's got oil. Just starting it to see if the top end's any good isn't gonna hurt it much. And as you can see there, there, now you guys can see, it's got oil. I'll look at this one again, because this is a bad one. That's not what we're usually worried about. But that there, side to side is bad. That isn't good. Uh, it's pretty scored up. Yeah, I think that one's probably toast. Also, there's melted down Babbitt on the outside of that. I don't know if that's normal from casting the bearings in there or what, but it must be because there's a little bit on these other ones. That has got to be the cleanest oil pan on one of these I've ever seen, though. Like, that is spotless. I wonder if there's a reason for that. Power's going on to the starter. I was holding off because it was I got quite a bit over here. Make sure these are all tight. Did you clean the points at least? Yeah, I cleaned them. Okay. We were getting spark on cylinder one at least. Alright, good. Back was full. I oh, said forward was full, didn't I? I forget. Spring, spring stretch. That's spring stretch. Okay.
Well, after a clank, clank, clank of that rod and no starting, lots of cranking and lots of it hitting on one cylinder almost, we're uh, taking the parts off of this that we need and going on to the DC-4. So guys, we're back at the DC-4. We got the ignition system in. We got the battery sort of rigged up here and we're gonna give it some ether and see if it'll go. Ready? Yep. Give it a little bit of choke maybe. The starter button's smoking. It's blowing the ether right out. Out of where? Oh, okay. Let's check the plugs. Go ahead, try it. Wrong button. It wants it. Right now. Whoa, sparks over here from the button. That's okay. No, no button. Uh, huh. Okay. Try it again. The button is sending sparks again. She's gonna go. Um, hold on, the throttle's a little sticky. Let me get ready to throttle it down. Nice smoke rings. Jeez, that's all the PP blaster burning out of it. Still going. I see it, that's cool. Could be the timing slightly off. Could be. Yeah, timing's definitely off. Okay. It's close though. What's that? I left everything. It's close if it's doing that. Try it again just real quick. It doesn't have fuel, but sounds good. You make an adjustment. Oof. Too much ether. Hold on. <laughs> I think it's firing later than it's supposed to. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Let's get closer. Let's try it again. Nah, go back to closer to where we started at. So tonight, we got it to crank over. We got it to blow smoke rings. It shot a bunch of fire out. But we're fighting with wiring it's bad and bad battery cables that aren't quite big enough and a starter that is probably in need of some help in the cleaning so we have proved that the engine can sort of run and doesn't have any clanks or rod knocks like the other one did unfortunately for it um this one isn't running running today but it's ready to go another day with some new wiring starter solenoid um and a key switch or a button switch thanks guys for watching and uh stay tuned for the next one